Welcome back, everyone, to episode seven. Are we on seven? Are we? Uh, episode seven, Marvin? Episode seven of Broken Spoken. My name is Alexander, and I'm here with... Mariel. And we're going to talk about some bullshit. Mm -hmm. We've been away for a few weeks. One, two weeks. One two week. weeks? Yeah, it feels we like missed, ages. We missed one week. We missed a lot of interesting action in the world, and so we're hoping to recuperate. I've been following the, um, the Duggar case. What's the Duggar case? Do you remember the 19 and Counting, that TV series about the ultra fundamentalist Christian family and they had 19 kids. No, you don't remember the show no. it was TLC and they became huge and they became like the representative for the fundamentalist Christian movement. And they were kind of the, the king and queen fundies. They had 19 kids, right? All of them have J names. So it's like Wait. Jana, Jessa, John David, Josiah, <laughs> Jebediah, Jordan. I feel like that's just like Ginger. shining a spotlight on your cultiness. Right. Well, it gets weirder. So anyway, they've been they've been like royalty, fundy royalty. Yeah. And uh, they had a TLC show. They had a spin-off TLC show about the oldest daughters. Okay. Hugely famous. This week was the trial for the eldest son, Josh, the firstborn, the eldest of the, all the kids, uh -huh. because he had kitty porn. Oh God. Yep. Yep. Well, they're not using that word anymore. They're using a pedophilia. No, I mean that's what he is. They're using a C A S M. C A S M, Ch like child assault sexual material, I think, or oh. some. They're, they're using some word for it that sounds better, like technically. Anyway, he's a piece of shit. Total. But he got he got convicted. Good, which is amazing, and uh, he's facing up to forty years in jail. Good. I, honestly, I I'm not really one for the death penalty usually, but the one time where I kind of question if I would change my it mind are in those instances. Yeah. So, and he has seven children of his own as well which is crazy. Wait, so the 19 children aren't his? No, no, he's the oldest son of the 19. Oh, wow. So he's the, he's like the firstborn, the golden oh, child. Oh, he's the one who's messed up. Mm -hmm. So he's the one who's reciprocating the issue. Well, no, no, so, so the, the two parents are called Jim, Bob, and Michelle. Okay. And they have 19 kids with Janie. Very distinguished. Yeah, the oldest kid is called Josh. Okay. I say kid, he's 33 now. The <laughs> oldest child, the oldest- Man. Man is called Josh. And he was, I mean, they were educated at home. They, he's running politically. He's trying to build like connections politically. Him and his own wife, Michelle, no, what's her name? Anna. Mm -hmm. I got the coffee burps again. Him and his own wife, Anna, decided to do the same thing his parents did where they don't believe in birth control and they are gonna have as many kids as God wills them to have. And so they have seven kids right now <laughs> with M names. I don't and think God's the one sticking it in, you know? Yeah, what I mean? exactly. Like well, <laughs> so now they ha now he's just been at trial. He had his trial and he's just been um, convicted. So he's gone away. Bye bye. The pest. They call him online the sex pest. The sex pest. They oh, just call God. it the pest. God, he's not going to make it in jail. You know, no, I you know think what he's they actually do. in um, solitary right now, because if you're a chomo, mm. you do not do well in jail. No. And thank God, you know, it's kind of nice to know that jails have some standards some morals right i feel like you could be a murderer you could be a a criminal a criminal I mean, you, are, you could be a thief uh run scams whatever it is but if you hurt a child mm -hmm. if you're a chomo then yeah you're screwed when it comes to jail i heard from I, my experience in right jail. right i heard from a friend recently about his experiences in prison Ooh, do tell and it was really really interesting he was actually talking about how the racism is compounded by the inmates themselves. Yeah, because like they go the into rules. groups, right? Yeah. yeah, everyone finds a group to align with and it tends to be race-based. Very race-based. Yeah. And what's weird is that um, it's kind of this like code more than it is a sentiment towards the person as an individual, right? It's more like, this is just the way things operate. It has nothing to do with your skin necessarily. Right, well, it's nothing to do with about their opinion of you. Right, by the color of your skin, like you can still actually like and respect the person. But if you're in that prison and you're breaking those rules, you're in physical danger. Well, I think it's um, safety numbers in a way. Like I think to survive yeah. prison, people have to get into groups. Yeah, and the unfortunately, right. an easy way to divide people up is they do it through race. So like you know, different races will stick together to provide some kind of protection for each other. He was telling me that, like for example, if you were to take a chip from somebody of a different color, mm -hmm. right? Like if you're a white guy in jail, you couldn't take a chip from a person of color's bag, right? Unless it was the very first thing that you took. I might be messing this up, but what basically like there's very fine rules in terms of when you're allowed to share food, when you're allowed to share anything, mm -hmm. right? 
what the rules are in your interactions with them, especially around like passing off cigarettes or something else that it's, it's extremely strict because if you don't follow it, you're the one that gets beat up. Yeah. I would by be, your group. I would not survive jail. I'd be someone's prison bitch so quickly. <laughs> Like I'll I would be, I would be wifed up and someone's prison bitch in about five minutes. It would be awful. <laughs> it would be That's terrible. what you'd look to do. You'd be like, I'm on the market. No, I wouldn't look to it. I just, I walk in and they'd be like that one. And then I'd be, <laughs> you'd be like, okay. I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm real weak. Oh man. Yeah. That's awful. I, you know, very few people I feel like would survive prison in jail. God, it's like, it's one of the most wild environments to find yourself in. That's you one know? of my biggest fears is being sent to uh, prison or jail for a crime I didn't commit. Ooh. Like that and spiders, my biggest fears. And bed bugs. Okay, yeah. Uh, bed bugs suck. I'm so afraid I've of them. I had bed bugs many years ago. I, I have nightmares bugs. about them constantly. I had bed bugs. It was so bad. I was in this terrible loft in Bushwick, Brooklyn. I knew, I went to that loft. I knew that loft. It yeah, was you were there. Cute. It was a nice. Okay, yeah. Loft. It looks great, right? It looks rentable. But then you live there and you're like, fuck. It's got the bugs. It's got the bugs. This was such a weird situation. My landlord would just waltz in and knock on my room door, not my front door. <laughs> he would knock on my room door to collect rent. <laughs> yeah. And I would freak out at this guy. He'd just walk in and then I hear a knock and I'm thinking it's my roommate. And yeah. so I open the door and I see my landlord there and he's like, I'm here to collect rent. And I'm like, what the fuck are you was doing from, in my apartment? Was he from Transylvania? No, is that what I sounded like? <laughs> yes. I'm here to collect my rent. I'm here to collect the rent. Where was he from? You know, um, you don't want to say that's Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, he, he has a kind of the Brooklyn accent. You know what I'm saying? I've never met my landlord, but I actually have a new one right now. We've got new building management. Oh, you did. And they fix things. And it's such a shock to me mm -hmm. that they've actually fixed yeah. things. I can't believe it. This is how, Oh, I didn't tell you the drama with the lights in my apartment. Yeah, I was going to ask you what happened with that. Okay, Did so they finally get rid of the lights? Let me explain what happened. I come home after Thanksgiving and I'm yeah. in bed and I'm lying in bed and I always sleep with my curtains open because I'm a really heavy sleeper. And if I don't have my curtains open, I won't wake up. I'll sleep till two in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Weird. So I'm lying in bed and my room is lit up like I'm in some football stadium. Yeah. And I'm like, what is going on? And I look at my window <laughs> and there's full on floodlights in the buildings opposite <laughs> me shining into my apartment. It looks like, you know, in movie sets when they have to pretend it's daylight outside. So they <laughs> yes. put a light outside the window and shine right. in. It was that shining oh. into my apartment. And I realized the building across, I put safety lights on, <laughs> but they put them this way, like headlights. And they just went straight into my bedroom window. And I, I was furious. I was so mad. And even with my curtains closed, it's, my room was lit up. It was like daylight in my room. So I, I tried to find the building manager through Google. Couldn't mm -hmm. find it. I went into the building. I buzzed the buzzers and was like, Amazon. Smart. And they let me in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and you're like, ding, 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 ding. Yeah, ding, exactly. Ding. And I found the building management's name. And who told you to do that? That's a genius move. That this guy. guy. Well, you didn't tell me to buzz in and say I'm Amazon, but you did say to go in the building and find the name. Yeah. So anyway, and then I tried to find the management company from that name, but they're really elusive and have terrible reviews online. And I'll tell you why they have terrible reviews online. Every management does. Well, they had specifically bad reviews because apparently a couple months ago, one of their buildings on the east side got broken into and someone's dog got stolen. And the <gasps> building refused to release the footage of it. So Evan in the building decided to go on Google and Yelp and slam this company to get oh them to do something. Oh my gosh, you don't mess so with the New Yorker's all dog. The, all the reviews were from the exact same time. And they're all like, how dare you? You don't care about animals. Like it was, yeah. So I couldn't get hold of them. So wow. then I realized I was out taking trash out one day with my neighbor. It's like two days later. Yeah. And there's an undercover police in front of my apartment. Okay. Because there's a parking bay there for police. Yeah. And I hear his radio and he's just dressed casually having a cigarette. And I was like, oh, that's undercover police. And sure enough, he pulls out a badge. And so I went up and asked him. I was like, hey, listen, what's the deal with these lights? Like, what yeah. can I do? Right. And you know, he goes, well, it can't be a police issue. I was like, no, I know that. And uh, I explained to him what I'd done. And he goes, you could be a detective. And I was like, thank you. Um, and he looked up more information about the building for us and helped us out, but he couldn't really do anything. He mm -hmm. was like, you know, you have to complain to the building. Right. So at this point I'm going crazy. So I wrote a letter to the local district leader. Nice. Did you like stamp I didn't it and wax? No, I should have. I didn't send it. I just wrote it up like a really angry email. How sick would that be though? If you went full calligraphy, like feathered pen, wax seal. What, got like an owl to deliver it to them? <laughs> yes. That would have been amazing. Yes. That's God. how serious I am. But so the next day I was like, all right, I, I got to do something because I'm getting angry by the second. I was about to take my broom and smash them. Like, w would your broom get that job done? 
probably like smash the light bulbs out. Nice. They replace them, but I don't want to get arrested. Like I just said, I would be a prison bitch. <laughs> so I really don't want to go to jail. <laughs> so, so did they take care of it? Finally, I managed to find out who the super was and I phoned him and okay. I told him what was going on. And the next day they fixed them. Oh, wow. And I couldn't believe it. Cause if you told my super something, it would take about six months of begging before they fixed it. Like I told oh, them my, yeah. my, my fridge was broken and they were just like, mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That happens sometimes. No, I, was I, like, I no. totally get it. I totally get it. You know, a lot of that isn't the super's fault either. It wasn't. And I was, the super was so nice and he was very apologetic. And I was like, look, it's not your fault. I was like, I'm just trying to reach the building management and yeah. you're the only phone number. You're the only person who would pick up the phone. That's the right way of doing it. So like, this is, you know, I'm so sorry that you're having to deal with this. Right. And he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I've lived in the neighbor 20 years. I know it's too much lights. They've really messed them up. And I was like, you know, I appreciate that. Please don't feel bad yourself. Mm -hmm. And he, he talked to the management and they fixed it. And I was just amazed that something actually got fixed. That's because a great New York story because that's a very rare occurrence. New York apartments for those listening are outside of New York. Notoriously terrible. My yeah. friend lived in Chinatown for a while and she had an electric door. Like the door was electric to get into her building. Yeah. And I say one out of every 10 times she did it, the door would full on electrocute her. <laughs> and the, and the building, what? So, like, so sometimes she put a key in and just be like zapped like hardcore zap not even like a static thing like that's proper, crazy like her arm would go numb kind of thing and the building just what? didn't fix it and then she lived there and i was like why are, and i think she eventually moved out because she was sick of being electrocuted yeah you know, like once a month yeah but, that uh, would do it for me yeah <laughs> that's such a crazy problem when she told me that i was like oh maybe my apartment problems aren't that bad no, you know, I'm like, I have a wobbly shelf. Maybe that's not so bad. I'm not that might be one of the worst problems I've heard. Getting electrocuted going into. Yeah. Every time you open a door, you get electrocuted. Yeah. Well, actually one out of 10 times. So it's I cannot believe that, that they allow that to go on. I mean, that is just so stupid. My one of my apartments I had in New York. If I opened the window, the whole window would fall out. <laughs> <laughs> like I how high up were you? A fourth floor <gasps> and it was a fourth massive, floor? it was the big 18 inch windows the huge ones oh my so if i lifted up God. my window the window would fall out and i towards you or towards the street towards the street oh. and i told my super i was like look when i try to open the window it starts to fall out the frame and he just goes okay well don't open the window then and i was like you can't you're like it. okay then i won't pay rent i was like what? yeah <laughs> all right thank you me being 21 was like oh, that makes sense <laughs> yeah he's like he's a nice guy that's, he really that's right. that's he really right. went above and beyond yeah. to help you out he tried <laughs> how he is tried. it that more people don't die from falling things in new york i googled this once because um so i i have a slight tendency to panic i don't know if you guys know that <laughs> but uh i was installing my ac unit one year yeah and i suddenly had this huge fear that i was going to kill someone like yeah. Having my AC unit fall out my window. Which is honestly really not an irrational thought. Right. So I, just so everyone knows the way that ACs are put I into windows. Out the window in New York onto the street. Right. It's it's Higher. the rear end of it is very heavy and you you Thank basically you so just barely catch the front of your AC with the lip of the window mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. Like very few people actually Do drill. Do it properly where you get the and, sand. Yeah. People just put it in the window, shut the window. Shut the win and, and the window it holds it shut. Yeah. So if you open a window, that thing is flying out. And they weigh so much. Yeah, they weigh like what? 80 pounds yeah, maybe? 90 heavy. pounds? So I was installing my AC unit like yeah. I do every year. And suddenly I had this mass panic that I'm going to I'm gonna kill someone. And I can't live with that. So I Googled how many people have died from AC units falling out the window. Can I guess before? Go for it. Right, I'm going to make a guess. Marvin, you start. What, what's your guess? How many people do you think? Have died. In the last 10 years, how many people have died from AC units falling out of their window? 50? Whoa, that low? That's very confident. I'm going to say 500. Do you know how many? How many? One. Get out of here. One. One person in the last 10 years has died from an AC unit falling out the window. More people have been injured, but actually like yeah. dead. I feel like you've stumbled on a conspiracy. One. One person. How does that make sense? Because they fall a lot, right? But the chances of, the, of them actually hitting someone is not that common. Wow. That made me feel better though. I slept okay because I couldn't sleep for a while because I was convinced I was going to murder people going to the laundry under my building. But if you drop if you drop a penny from the Empire State Building, yeah. I don't know if this is true. I never actually looked this up. Let's verify this. I heard if you drop a penny from the Empire State Building, it goes through a cab. That's what I was told. Oh, I was told it could kill someone. I didn't hear it could go through a cab. Yeah, like that's how strong it is that I it goes through think a cab that's roof. True. And like can it strike somebody in a no, seat. No, because if that was true, then like if a bird took a shit high up, it would murder you if you landed. Like no, because. You know. Because of fluid dynamic, the, the poo itself. It's like sweat. Well, I mean, it kind of turns into a parachute, right? It's not like a hard item. 
Is that true? Can a penny kill someone from that high That's up? what I heard. And I don't, that was like one of the first things yeah, that I was Yeah, but they told. also told me Pluto was a planet and then changed their minds. So like, who yeah, knows? What is going on? So what is going on Pluto? We? Where are we with Pluto? Is it a planet? Is it officially planet or is it a moon? It's a moon still. or a rock. It's a moon now. We got to find that out. Yeah, because last I heard Pluto is a moon now. Because we learned my very easy method just speeds up naming planets. So M Mars, Venus, Earth, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune. Hold on. Mercury's Pluto. closer. Mercury is the closest Mer maybe to the it's sun. Mercury, then. Yeah. Mercury. <laughs> yeah, Mars is the closest Earth. to us. So it's my very. So it's Mercury. Mercury, Venus, Mars, no, Earth. No, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Earth Mars, Mars. Yeah. Jupiter. Jupiter, which is a huge S distance away. Saturn. Saturn, which Neptune, is gorgeous. Neptune, which is a sick name. Yeah. Neptune and Pluto. But maybe it should be my very easy method just speeds up naming. They believe there's a 13th planet. You heard that theory? Wait, 13th? We've yeah, only got nine. Beyond, so what happened to the other <laughs> two in the middle, three, four in the middle there? <laughs> yeah. What did happen to that? <laughs> Wait, so yeah. My very easy method just speeds up. Oh, maybe, maybe it's 10th planet. planet. Maybe it's, it's the 10th planet. planet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every week, every week there's one. Damn it. <laughs> You just look like an idiot. No, that's all right. Yeah, there's a mystery planet that people believe exist. That's cool. You know? I mean, there's but hundreds of planets. You mean in our Milky Way? Yeah, I'm in saying a 10th planet yeah. just beyond Pluto. Ooh. There's a belief that there's well, a 10th planet. It could be plan the ninth if Pluto isn't a planet. It could be the it's ninth true. planet. true. It would be the ninth, wouldn't it? But you hear, um, God, man. I, they say Pluto's small. I know it's not that small, but in my mind, it's like the size of an apple. Yeah. Because, you know, people talk about it being so small. Yeah. I know it's not. It's not that But small. that's just how I think of it. <laughs> Maybe like a yeah. large baseball. Oh my possible. God. Did you hear what China sent to the moon recently? What did they send to the moon? This is a crazy, crazy conspiracy, okay? Wait, is this real or, or no, conspiracy? No, this is real. Okay. This is real. Whether it's verified or not is, is what's left to be seen. So you know that China is completely wrecking us in space travel at the moment. Yeah, that's like they're sending up multiple rovers to Mars and to, to the moon. Mm -hmm. Like they are really above and beyond our space program at the moment. Right. We're focused right now on privatizing space, which we will definitely do, right? With uh, Blue Horizon, which is Jeff Bezos' rocket company. Is that company. the rocket that looks like a penis? It looked exactly like a penis going yeah. in the sky, which we have to talk about. But China is going to uh, to the moon to investigate this cube that they found on the moon. Can you look this up, Marvin? Just so we can be uh, very specific. Did you ever watch Wallace and Gromit when they go to the moon? Well, hold, hold on on that, but the cube. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> they found a cube. Mm-hmm. In, in satellite imagery that they cannot explain. So they're trying to find it now. And so they, they're so curious about it that they sent an entire moon mission. You know what it is? Out. Aliens. <laughs> I don't know if it's aliens, but it could be like an artifact. It could be. Yeah, that could be cool. You know, something that. Um, There's also a shit ton of trash just floating around out of space, isn't there? Yeah, it's a because good question. Because anytime the rockets go up there, they just like they just let stuff off their rockets. That's yeah, true. They yeah. don't bother about where it goes. Well, a lot of it goes back into Earth. Oh. Yeah, that's sad. A lot of it goes back into Earth, but you know what that kind of looks like when you play Battleships, the little figurines. <laughs> yeah, it, does. it looked a bit like that, didn't it? Yeah, it does it? look like that. But there's all these mysteries, like Buzz Aldrin. Mm. You know, you know, Buzz Aldrin pointed to um, what they call the, uh, the 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 shrine of Phobos. I think it's called something of Phobos, the statue of Phobos, which is the Greek goddess of fear. On the moon. On Mars, where it looks like an obelisk. I thought they haven't been to Mars yet. Or have they been, no, but been there's satellite imagery. Oh, okay. Right? Says he saw some sort of um, like monolith, some sort of monolith on Mars or the moon. I'm maybe mixing them up, but he swears by he this. He went to the moon. There's he? an obelisk, he says. Use the word obelisk because that's what he says. Yeah, he went to the moon. He was Buzz Aldrin. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He is. yeah. And he found an obelisk that he uh, claims is like has been there before they landed. Yeah. And it's this big mystery. And there's interesting photos of it. But, you know, it could be anything. It could be like a, a piece of rock that fell off a cliff face and mm. somehow landed perfectly straight up. Oh, I'd love to go to space. So, oh, yeah, my God. I'd love to. In Wallace and Gromit, when they go to space, they're trying to find cheese. Mm -hmm. And they think the moon's made of cheese because that's what we were told as kids. Yeah. Right? The that it's a big cheese. cheese. It's a big cheese. And so they go up there and they try and eat some of the moon and it's not cheese, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought that was because of the, the famous movie, uh, The Train Robbery, right? Remember the famous... One of the first films ever to come out, I believe, is The Great Train Robbery. Um, Never heard of it. And uh, it was a famous silent film where a rocket gets stuck in the moon's eye, right? And it's cheesing. It's a big smile. It's a very famous image. Oh. Right? And that's what turned the moon into a big smile. That's like what started that. And so 
I think it's the great train robbery. I could be wrong about that. Um, do you see the face in the moon when you look at it? You do. And it's a I person. Do. It's a, Oh, you mean in real life or in no, this like movie? when you look up at the sky, do you see a face? Cause I do. Um, yeah. It's doing this. I see a face. I see a face. Yeah. It, it, like a sad face. But like, I think it's because of that movie that I see a face. You know, I don't think it's like something that just naturally goes. I think it's just the shape of the, the rocket. So the moon is so crazy. interesting, you know, like the mysteries of that place. My God. I once heard that there's a, a giant amount of H2, like hydrogen two in On the, the moon. moon. And that, you know, there's conversations of using that as some sort of refinery. There's like a sci-fi movie where gonna, they're doing that. We've already that. fucked up Earth. We're going to fuck up space too. It's kind of sad. I think actually um, us fucking up space makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and fucking up the Earth? Yes. What, name Why, one other place space. that can sustain life. <clears throat> but we're in space. We don't want to fuck it up because we're in it. Right. Well, yeah, I'm not saying like the fabric of space. That'd mm. be bad. What I'm saying is, is would you rather drill on an asteroid that happens to come in our direction oh. or drill on Earth? I thought you meant like, let's go fuck up the moon so we don't fuck up Earth. Yeah, I would prefer that over the <laughs> Earth. No. Why? I mean, honestly, think but about I it. I feel like if we fucked up the moon, something cataclysmic would happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Our, our, like we'd have no tides or something and the world would just go... <laughs> Have you watched the new Sex in the City reboot? Everyone's talking about this. I yeah. saw Jonah Hill post something about why didn't you call 911? Yes, and then I saw yes. Ireland Baldwin put something yes. on her feed where she's like saying, you know, she reenacted the scene where, yeah. is it Mr. Big? Mr. Big. Can Wait, I spoil can we do it? Spo spoilers. Spoilers. Spoilers, yeah. spoilers, spoilers. So skip this if you haven't seen it. So the in the end of the episode, right, Mr. Big, who's one of the main characters is who Carrie's been He's like the male, yeah, he's like the male version of her, right? Well, he, it's who she's been kind of like chasing and had an on and off thing with the entire Why is he Mr. Big, by six the way? seasons. Cause we didn't find out his name until very late, like until the last. But why'd she call him Mr. Big? Cause, um, is it like a penis size thing? No, it's cause he's very rich and he's very wealthy and got swagger. So in Sex oh, okay. in the City. So he's like magnanimous. She, she writes a column, right? Okay. So often sometimes people have nicknames cause she doesn't want to use their names. Right. So the nickname she used in the column when talking about their life is Mr. Big. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Oh, because she writes a column. She writes a column. So she writes like a gossip column it's of, like a sex, in the city. Sex in That's the why city it's called column. Sex in That's the City. That's the name of the column. All yeah. right. So I'm learning here. So <laughs> it's a great series. So anyway, so she called him Mr. Big. So mm -hmm. Mr. Big, she's been on and off with through the whole series. They finally get together, get married. It's a whole thing. You finally, yeah. they're finally like in love and she has the life she wanted. In this, epi in this episode of the new remake and just like that, he's on the Peloton and he's cycling and they make a big deal of being like, it's a Peloton and they have a Peloton instructor and he's following the video and he's cycling and he gets off the Peloton mm -hmm. and has a fucking heart attack and dies. <laughs> oh my God. And apparently Peloton didn't know this was happening. <gasps> like Peloton knew that they were going to be in the show, but they, because of how much um, secrecy the series is under, no one told them that oh, Mr. Big was going to have a heart lawsuit. attack. Lawsuit. Well, they do make it very clear that Defamation. it's not the Peloton. They even bring it up a couple of times. They're like, no, he had a heart condition. He'd ridden over a thousand times. His cardiologist said it was okay. But you know how people are online. They're still like, fuck Peloton. I'm throwing it yeah, out. People still don't buy Corona beers because of COVID-19. <laughs> so Peloton apparently are kind of pissed because... Uh, you know, Mr. Big died in the Peloton and now everyone's like, I knew Pelotons were bad for us. No you know? way. But what about all those videos? Cause Ireland Baldwin posted on her Instagram, right? A video of her like redoing yeah. this scene. So did what's her name? So um, he, just like walk in on him dying and didn't call 911. Basically he, he like, like grabs his chest and keels over and she's there in the shower. No, no. She oh. comes home. Okay. She has a shower running and she goes in the room and she just stares at him and he's like on the floor. But he's alive at yeah, that yeah. moment. And then she goes, John, which is his real name. And she runs over and she grabs him and like her shoe gets wet. And that's symbolic because like the shoes have a meaning. You'll have to watch the show. And she okay. grabs him and holds him. And she's like, John. And she like holds him. And he's like doing this to his chest and she holds him. And then it says, the voiceover goes, and just like that, Big died. Like that's how the <laughs> 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 What? That's how the voiceover goes. Is this goes. show terrible? And then it ends. And so everyone's like, Bitch, why didn't you phone 911? You just stood there and held him. Like, I get it, it's shock, blah, blah, blah. But my first reaction would be to grab the phone and call someone. Yeah, because you're a human being. Anyway. But that doesn't make sense in my mind. This is going to frustrate so, me. But, why didn't she call 911? Yeah, it agreed. Well, also, it's so weird because we haven't had many deaths in Sex in the City. Like, it's not, it's not a CW drama. It's a comedy and it's funny and it's 
kind of like lighthearted and feisty. But why didn't she call 911? Well, just no one was expecting a death because we haven't had that happen. But how long was she holding him before she did anything? Maybe like a minute. Did she have her cell phone in her hand? Um, probably. When she walked into no, the room? No, she was. Was she on her phone? No, she wasn't. She could imagine if she just threw her phone aside. And then went what do you think a hug is going to do? Well, maybe she was in shock because her husband was on the floor clutching his chest. She should have phoned now. It's a bad time to be shocked. You know what though? I had to. <laughs> you I had know, to it's a real bad. You dropped the ball. I had to phone nine one one once, and I was in such a panic that I couldn't remember the number. Because in England, yeah. it's nine nine nine, and so I had to think for a minute. I was like, "What? What number do I dial?" That's a bad number to choose, though. Right? And then I, what if it happens in your pocket? Well, like, why is that any better than nine one one? Because it's two different numbers. It'd be harder for uh -huh. it to dial in your pocket, right? No, I don't know. You don't think so? But nine one one, you didn't remember, so you were like, "Well, oh, I oh. I remembered it, but I had to be, I had to think for a minute, yeah, and think, and then I remembered and was like, oh, okay, nine one one, and just and like I, that, and just like that, I phoned nine one one. Mariel's friend died. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. It's was when they someone set fire to a, a, a police car, and just like that. Did I tell you the story? No, about someone blowing up a police car in my neighborhood. This sounds awesome. So, like, well, during the maybe not. Well, during the <laughs> pandemic, when there was a lot of these like you know protests happening in the city, mm -hmm. a lot of Black Lives Matter stuff going on. Um, I, right in front of my apartment is a, is a, is a police parking bay. So mm -hmm. police cars always park there. And my roommates are out of town. It was just me because we were in a pandemic and I fell asleep on the couch. I like, you know, woke up around 2.30. AM? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. AM. And I went to get into bed. So I was getting my pajamas on and I hear the sound of glass breaking. And I don't think much of it because when they're taking the trash and they're recycling out, you normally hear that sound in the street. Mm -hmm. like they'll, they'll take the, the recycling out and a bottle will drop or something. And then I hear like that, like, the, like a comical sound almost, like an explosion. How, like how big? Was it shaking like, your windows big or? Loud, like <laughs> not shaking my windows, but real mm -hmm. loud. Okay. And my first thought was, oh, gas explosion or something. Oh, wow. And I look at my window and the, the police car right in front of my apartment, because I'm on the second floor, fully engulfed in flames. What? Like a movie, like <laughs> the whole thing was up in flames. Wow. And so I phoned 911. I had to think for a minute, but I phoned 911 and they came and they put it out but someone had thrown a Molotov cocktail through the yeah. car window and blown it up. That's insane. Yeah. And uh, I was going to say, it sounds like they put some sort of accelerant. They on did it. because it went up really fast in flames yeah. and then it died down pretty quickly. And the police came and put it out pretty fast. By the time the fire department had gotten there, the police had already extinguished it because if it catches the, the gas in the engine, then that could be Explosion. massive. Yeah. So. Jeez. That's um, crazy. And so, I mean, we don't know if it was, an actual protester, like trying to send a point, or if it was someone trying to make the protesters look bad. Well, this that is was happening too. This is what's coming out now: the amount of agent provocateurs yeah, so that have been involved in everything, every every side of the aisles protest, yeah. every single one. And it's it's really like a spooky thing that we well, have to come to terms because with. Because it was that day there had been a protest down like down the road from me. I'd heard them. And so I and they clearly picked a car that was parked that was empty and alone because it was yeah. so they weren't trying to hurt someone. It was to send a message, you know. So I don't know if it was someone trying to make protesters look bad or an actual protester, but I googled it afterwards and apparently that had been happening all over New York. Mm -hmm. so, like tons of police cars have been set fire like yep. that. You were talking about the Gretchen Whitmore. Yeah, yes, and agent provocateurs. This is crazy. What's Wait, coming out about it? I don't know anything about it. The majority of people involved oh, in the geez. Gretchen Whitmore kidnapping are FBI. What? Yes. That's crazy. I know. And they were basically convincing this person to escalate and to escalate into potentially kidnapping. And so oh. what they're doing right now is they're suing the FBI for entrapment. And so now there's this huge case. That's happened it. for years though. That stuff has been happening for years. For years, right? You know what's the scariest video? You, everyone needs to see this video. In the 70s, um, we had a Russian KGB agent defect mm -hmm. from Russia to the United States. And his, uh, his whole life, he was acting as an agent provocateur in like India, right? Um, I, I can't forget his name. Uh, I, I don't remember his name, but it's easy to look him up. And he gives these lectures of what the playbook is for KGB to flip governments. It's crazy. And he goes step by step what he has done, what they've succeeded doing, and what he knows they're planning on doing to the Ooh. United States. And it's all about inflating racial tension. And you watch this video and he goes step by step on how to demoralize a nation, which is the first thing you have to do in order to flip its government, is to demoralize a nation. Now this playbook we've done, 
you know, probably in Latin America, which we, you know, we do constantly in order for oil rights, like in Venezuela or, you know, regime changes or whatever we need to do. And he just completely breaks it down and talks about these agent provocateurs and how he was one. And he pretended to be this hippie over in India. And he would be passing on information about this group that he infiltrated oh my as just this like, you know, sandal wearing hippie. He's a sandal wearing hippie, but he was an agent provocateur. And he's one of the most articulate people I've ever heard. And he gives this two hour long is presentation. This a, is this a TED talk? It sounds like a TED talk. No, he was doing it, I think, in Cambridge. Oh, cool. No, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is a lecture. a lecture. It's a lecture in like Ivy League universities where he's wow. talking about, mark my words, this is going to happen in America. Wow. And so, you know, this is, this kind of like brings up an interesting conversation, right? Whereas free thinking Americans, we have to be conscious of that as well as how we protect ourselves and our freedoms. Mm. You know, and I, I, I feel like people aren't taking that very seriously. I think people have so many other things. Obviously, it is very serious. Right, but it's, it's distance from us. And people have so many other things in their present day lives that they're trying to worry and manage about that that doesn't come to the forefront. You know, this is the argument of why we're a democratic republic as opposed to an actual democracy, right? We're really a republic. We're not even a democracy, mm -hmm. right? A democracy was ancient Greece where every single person in the city would meet um, at the, uh, the Agropolis, I think it was called, uh, where they would all deliberate on what kind of laws they'd want to pass. We're a democratic republic, right? So it's, it's a little bit different. And that's why we want representation in order to make the choices for the masses. But it still requires a balance. And this is where I think a lot of our civic duties have gone to the wayside. Yeah. You know, it's like it should be our responsibility to take, take that into account because we do have a voice and we do have things to say. You know, sure. it's important because all this can go. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. well, if that's the case, I'd move back to England. <laughs> Just bounce straight oh, away. How is Peace. England doing right now? Are they kind of in turmoil? Or are they doing all right? Um, I actually don't know. My brother's there right now. So what does he say? He seems pretty content. Yeah. I mean, they were really strict on the lockdowns for a while. Yeah. Um, I think they've lifted a lot of them. Mm -hmm. The government's all over the place, I'm sure, but he seems pretty content. Yeah. Speaking of COVID stuff, we have a special gift here. So <laughs> yes. this is amazing. This so, is so silly. So our amazing um, director, Marvin, he got his vax, his booster vaccine today, right? Yes. And they gave him a swag bag, which we have. And I'm kind of jealous because honestly, when I got my vaccine, they gave me jack shit. Like not even a sticker, nothing. They just said bye and kicked me out the front door. And Marvin got a whole goodie bag here. So we're going to go through and see what they give you. We're going to open it? Oh yeah, we're going to get see what we get when you get a That's booster. That's exciting. Box. Let's open it. Hold on, what do you think they're gonna give before you open it? I, my guess is um, a mug. A mug? I'm gonna I say take a mug. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like hand sanitizer or like a fridge magnet. Oh, right? it's definitely gonna be a hand sanitizer or like vote for Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, there's, it's quite a lot in here. Really? How heavy is it? It's hefty. Feel that? How many pounds do you think? I don't know. I'm this is like bad you know, like two pounds maybe. All right. So first things first. Okay. Do they ask you your size? No. They're just making assumptions. Keep in mind, this they is going to come on the microphone. It sounds. Oh, it says I'm an NYC Vax champ. <laughs> oh my! It's a T-shirt. God, you're a Vax champ. Oh, and it's the Lady Liberty with a mask on and a band aid. It's quite <sighs> sweet. So NYC Vax champ. Oh, it's long oh, it's sleeve. Long sleeve. Okay. And then look at the back. What does it say on the back? You have now become a representative for the COVID vaccine. <laughs> oh my, you've been recruited. It says, ask me about the COVID vaccines. It's safe and it's easy. Is that what it says? It's safe, free and easy. It's actually a nice quality shirt. Yeah. You're an NYC <laughs> Vax champ. Okay, so that's number one. That's pretty good. That's good. Pretty good free t-shirt. We love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, a lanyard, I think. Okay. Oh, okay. Again, I'm an NYC Vax champ. <laughs> they really like this this phrase they came up with. Millions of dollars went into that Sorry. specific do people, sentence. Do people use these anymore? Um, no. All right. Unless I'm at a conference, you know. College. You got a charity band yeah. that again says I'm an ex NYC Vax champ. That's kind of fun. I remember I'm a these, Vax champ. Do you remember when these were the rage and everyone had the live strong yes. bands? Yes. Those were good times. Those were good times. That's okay. when we rallied behind problems. Dude, you could be decked out oh head my to toe gosh. in the I'm an NYC Vax champ. You would be covered. They have everything. Everything is the same slogan. You're going to start looking like the little kid from uh, Up where he has all these pins. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just. Okay. What else do you have? You got a baseball cap? You got a hat? Where does it end? I'm an NYC Vax champ. <laughs> Let me see this one. You should put that on. No, I'm not. I'm not going to put it on. <laughs> this is a 
actually quite nice. Oh my goodness. Look, hand sanny. You got a sanny pack. Wow. They're using slang even, sanny. They give you this every time? I don't know. You have four pairs. You have two pairs of exam gloves, one hand sanitizer, two pairs of face masks, a sanitizer gel pack, and a 10 pack of antibacterial wipes. Oh my gosh. I wish there was some diversity in the phrases so you didn't look so cliche wearing them all at once. Mm -hmm. But like, this is a nice hat. Yeah. It's not a bad quality hat, I have to admit. It's not, it's nice. You wow. Are, you are now the official representat re representative for the vaccine though, because you are wearing a shirt saying, ask me about the vaccine. That means you get to answer all of our questions. <laughs> get vaccinated. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Get vaccinated. <laughs> You're vaccinated. Don't get me Talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor. Get vaccinated. Talk to your doctor. And your doctor will tell you to get vaccinated. Talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor. You're vaccinated. You know they haven't released the patent? Just saying. You're vaccinated? Yeah, once. You didn't get the other second one? Nope. Oh, Alexander. Yep. Why? Oh, you mean like sec like boosters? No, I meant you didn't get your two from your- Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. God, you were scaring me for a sec. I thought yeah, you just got one of like the- No, I haven't gotten boosters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm getting my Wednesday. I'm excited. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Ugh. Anyway, nice swag. It's a good swag bag. It's a good swag bag. Lots, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff on there. I don't know what I'm ripping this off for. Uh, no, 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 I didn't break it. I break it. But yeah, you know they didn't release the patent for the vaccine. Did you know this? That governments aren't releasing how to make the vaccine. Well, I'm not surprised. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised because they don't want people copying their patents. So why would that be if it's an important love human a conspiracy right? Conspiracy theory. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's just economics. I think the vaccine is saving people's lives, so. I think so too. Yeah. I think so too. And in, in certain cases I do. Yeah, yeah. Really absolutely. Is. I think, absolutely. I don't think it's perfect. Like I think you can still get COVID with the vaccine. I'm very aware of that. You can. You know, I know you can. Yeah. But I think the amount of hospital, like death is preventing is really significant. And I think it's mm -hmm. really helping. Yeah, I think if um, you're a certain age and you have certain, you know, health conditions, it's definitely a must mm -hmm. without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. It's, uh, yeah, it's a weird time. Yeah. But I do like your swag bag, Marvin, congratulations. Okay. What did you want in the bag? If yeah. you could have had anything in the bag. Oh my God, yeah, what would, okay, if you were an anti-vaxxer, yeah. all right, let's say you were an anti-vaxxer, what would it take for you to get vaccinated depending on what's in the swag bag? Well, no, because it's a sense of pride now, isn't it, for anti-vaxxers, they don't want the vaccine so they can be. Okay, say you're on the fence. Then. Yeah, okay, you're on the fence. You're on the fence. You say, you're I need a good money. Money, Yeah. how much money do you think you would need? Bucks. That's, That's a fair. great deal. Yeah. Fair. That's a great deal. Yeah. Well, they were offering incentives. They were offering free Metro cards, everything this to get the vaccine. Right yeah. Mm, and free, yeah. free donuts at, at Krispy Kreme. I would love data. That's what I would love. Data. What that would mean? be my request. <laughs> data. <laughs> data. Yep. If they, if they gave me a sheet signed off by the CDC that lists all of the statistics and the risks, I would do it. They have that. They you can look online. Yeah, I have. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. That's the problem. <laughs> but that's what they should do, right? They should be educating because I had a coworker the other day. He was sneezing and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Look how uncomfortable you guys got. Everyone's uncomfortable. I'm not it's okay. uncomfortable. It's okay. Um, I'm not uncomfortable. Okay, good, 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 good. I had a colleague the other day. He was coughing and sneezing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I work in a very small environment. So it's not a lot of people. And so I asked him, I'm like, hey, man, how are you feeling? He's like, not good. Well, now I'm uncomfortable. And now I'm saying, okay, well, did you go get tested? And he says, no, I don't need to do that. And I'm like, oh, why? He's like, because I'm vaccinated. No, see, that's just stupid though. And I'm like, no, this stupid. is not how this works. So, Wait, so you're around this coworker? Mm -hmm. That's okay. We all got tested. It's been five days. Right, we tested okay, five okay. days in a row. Don't worry. You're fine. Everything's fine. But you know, it's interesting that like he thought that I'm wearing because all my you're vaccinated. Swag. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> 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 just like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have COVID. Welcome. Omicron and Delta. This is my thing, right? I have managed, Omadelt. Omadelt. <laughs> I've managed to avoid COVID meticulously. And so at this point, if I get it, I'll just be annoyed because I've been so careful about not getting it that I'll be pissed off. You're going to get it. I'm going to get you know, it. It's You're going to get it. You know, it's true. My brother said it's not, it's not, uh, it's never gonna end. if it's when, Yeah. you it's, know, this is never going to end. And I, and I, and I feel that, but 
I would like to put it off as long as possible because I don't want the long haul symptoms. I have a friend who still can't mm. smell after that sucks. a year. That sucks. A year, she still has no sense of smell. That honestly, it's I'm more wild. scared of than any other symptom for it. You know, yeah. like I could, I think I'm healthy enough to deal with it normally, but you never know. Right. But the smell, losing that or your taste forever yeah. would yes. be such or a bummer. Some people get it where their taste just changes and nothing tastes good. Yeah. There's this, there's a thing where your That's taste scary. changes and everything tastes like garbage. That might help with the diet though. Keep you know, like honestly, I was just thinking that. <laughs> I do want to trim right. off of it. It's like so chicken maybe, and rice, please. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> that might help actually me right. like slim down a, a scotch if right. everything Kale every day. Is disgusting. You know what I mean? Because right now everything tastes fucking delicious. <laughs> so it's a problem. Honestly, I- What's your guilty pleasure? Oh, like what's your carbs, go-to? Yeah, but pasta, what? Pasta, yeah. pasta, pasta. Yeah. Like mac and cheese. No, 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 no. Fettuccine Alfredo. Like just pasta. Actually, this is so gross. Do you want to know what my favorite thing is? I yeah. Can, actually, I shouldn't say it. You, well, too late. My friend calls it prison food. I've been eating it <laughs> since I was a kid. <laughs> it's 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 pasta with butter and ketchup on it. Oh, wow. That is prison food. Yeah. But I respect that you just admitted that. Yeah. And I love it. And it's like my comfort food. I've had it since I was a child. So like Kraft macaroni and cheese without the cheese, basically. No, it's just regular penne pasta. And then I squeeze ketchup on it. Whoa. Yeah. It's, That's yeah. special. It's, I do understand butter. Food. My old roommate yeah. would be, oh, you're making a prison food again. And I was like, yeah. I yeah, yeah. But it's, I just like carbs. Like last night we went out for dinner for Italian food. Where'd you go? Really indulged. Gali is around the corner from here. How do you spell that? G-A-L-L-I. Oh. It was fantastic. Gali. Wait, yeah, I've heard of that. It's place. literally around the corner from yeah, here. Yeah, okay, that's why I know it. I almost came and knocked on the it's, door. It's Wait, south, were you here last south night? here. We're on Wooster Street. So yeah. that's like what? That's um, Broadway. No, it's on Mercer. Oh, it's on Mercer. Okay, so it's west. Yeah. Or wait, east, Wait, rather. were you here last night in the studio? <laughs> Every day. Oh, I should have not. I yeah. literally walked past the studio really? last night. I should have knocked. Yeah. But we went out for dinner and, you know, just really indulged. We had pasta and bread and, and that's oh, why I feel real puffy It's my today. favorite thing in the world. Yeah, it was a real good cob fest. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I wasn't here yesterday, actually. I had to go up to Greenwich, Connecticut. Oh, nice. Yeah, we have some uh, Pink Floyd people coming through. Mm. Uh, saxophonist for Pink Floyd. Very Stan. cool. Um, and Maze X as well, swinging through. Nice. And then, uh, yeah, then I had a Christmas party, which was actually really nice. Oh, good. Yeah, you know, it was, it was, um, it, it felt very good, you know, because you know, I'm not a decorative person, right? Right, you know this. Like, yeah. I'm not really like one to do like interior design stuff. I'm not really like, uh, I don't know how to like dress a home very well. You know, like I'm a pretty simple I guy. I, your old apartments always had a nice layout. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Night, it was minimal, but it was nice. I always yeah. liked it. Yeah. And so my roommate, he always does a really good job with this, right? So he like dresses up the tree. We oh, did yeah, this you whole- got, Your roommate has designed your apartment beautifully. It's yeah. so nice. He's, he's amazing. I mean, he, he works in design himself, professionally. Gorgeous. So of course, right? But we did this thing called a white elephant. Have you ever played I this game? I love White Elephant, yeah. yeah. Until you get the shit present. It's fun unless you get stuck with the crappy <laughs> but present. But then you get the steal. Yeah, but then sometimes like you don't do it tactically right. Yeah, that was And me. everyone else gets like a Google Home Hub and right. then you're stuck with like a sticker pack or something. <laughs> That's actually happened to me. <laughs> That's why I'm talking about that. I bought, it was a $15 like gift buy-in or more. So I did $15 of scratch-offs. <laughs> okay yeah person one sixteen dollars you're welcome that, that's, that's not investment bad. that's making a one dollar profit off a white elephant that was a weird experience though. i don't know if you've ever bought lottery tickets let me tell you you go in and everyone's like anxious you know like it's it's like a it's like a scratchies. horse track that's no what i love it felt like. scratchies it felt like a horse track really yeah everyone was kind of like uh you know like uh, itchy Edgy? for their yeah, itchy, itchy and for edgy. The scratchy. Yes. No, really. And yeah. you can't buy it with a credit card. I didn't know that. You can't? No, you have to buy it in cash. Oh. I, I, the first time I ever bought a scratch card, I won two pounds. And I remember thinking, I'm lucky. And then I bought another one. I don't win anything. <laughs> so. I've never won a single lottery ticket at all. Never? Yeah. Wait, so first of all, tell me what's your indulgence? Because I did share mine. Oh, my food indulgence. It's fettuccine Alfredo with mm -hmm. chicken and broccoli. Oh, I don't like it with the chicken, but that's fair. Fettuccine Alfredo. Like the crappy version oh. from Olive Garden? Or I could like use a that good for Christmas. Version? What do you want for Christmas? That's a good question. Do you have like a Christmas list? World peace. Um, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> some of it's really boring. Some of it's like- Bad time to ask for that, <laughs> let me tell you. Some of it's- um, 200,000 Russians outside Ukraine. I don't think we're gonna have peace anytime soon. That makes me sad. Um, I asked for a new hairbrush, but that's so unexciting. You have to, really? Do you brush curly hair? I don't. How does this work? You don't brush curly hair, right? but there's a new type. Well, it's not new. There's a, there's a brush you can use on it wet to help encourage the curl. 
and I've been seeing a lot of stuff about it online. So you're gonna be like Shirley Templed out in the next Maybe. podcast? Maybe, we'll see if it works. So I'm, I asked for that for Christmas. I also asked for new pair of boots. Nice, what kind? Uh, just regular boots. New York destroys my shoes. That's so the thing, shoes that's what I was getting at. I need like destroys. snowshoes. Yeah. And then right? what else did I ask for? And then I asked for, I don't know, nothing exciting. There was nothing this year. It's always apartment stuff. The older I get, it's always yeah. boring apartment stuff like a toaster oven or bed sheets or boots. That's not bad. I just re-upped my bed sheets. Ooh. I didn't realize that I bought UGG bed sheets. What's that? Like UGG, like the boot Like brand? the boot. They sell bed sheets? They sell bed sheets or maybe a comforter is more accurate. Right. Oh my is God, it it's is so that amazing. It's the Wait, best. so what do you want for Christmas? You didn't say. Oh, what do I want for Christmas? Um, You know, not much. I'm flying out to Texas. So like uh, I preferred all my Christmas gifts to go to like my baby cousins. because So world peace. They need it. <laughs> yeah, so world peace. There you go. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I need don't, anything. I'm not you know? a big I Chris. I mean, I love Christmas, gloves? but I'm not a big presenty person. Yeah. Yeah. Winter gloves, like a good pair of leather winter gloves that I can text in. I also just had my birthday, so I got some- <laughs> Why is that so funny, Marvin? Things. Marvin's laughing at me. Is that a weird gift? Well, between the boots and the gloves, you have a little dominatrix. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want, gift He's like mask. leather boots, leather no. gloves, a leather outfit, and a leather whip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, I, I just had my birthday in October, so I got some pretty good, I got kind of stocked up in presents. Nice. Like I got a Sephora gift card for my brother, which was nice. Okay. My other brother bought me, he came to visit, and he filled his backpack with cheese, because he's a cheesemonger. What? And took the train in from Boston. <laughs> Hold on, explain that, please. My younger brother's a cheesemonger, right? He works in che with cheese. Oh, oh, that's a real job? It's a real job. I thought, job. I thought yeah. you were saying he's obsessed with cheese. No, he, he works with cheese. So like, they called a cheese monger? Yeah, like he serves cheese. Like a war monger, but instead of you're a cheese monger? Like a fish monger, a cheese monger. Oh. Is that a thing? Is that maybe only a British English, thing? Maybe that's an English phrase? Maybe. So when he came cool. to visit, for even though I'm lactose intolerant, he filled yeah. his backpack full of cheese. <laughs> and then that was my, my birthday present was like a ton of cheese, <laughs> which I love. He just loved. comes in like I a love. drug dealer and just pours out no, cheese. quite literally. Like what do you oh, he, op huh? I, he opened his bag and was like, happy birthday. And there was like four types of cheese in his bag. You have a favorite? Uh, right, here, I'll, I'll present you a few sandwiches. You tell me what cheese you think fits. There was it. some, okay. okay. All right, um, chicken on whole wheat with lettuce and tomato and? A mozzarella. Whoa, did not see that coming. Yeah, Melted mozzarella. or cold? Depends. If Depends. it could be cold and sliced or mozzarella. I like, I like my mozzarella cold. I don't like my mozzarella melted, yeah. Okay, okay, here's another one. Um, beefy hamburger perfectly cooked on a bun with? Oh, you need like a cheddar for that. Cheddar, Healthy I agree. Cheddar, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, here's another Sometimes, one. sometimes an American craft slice really mm. does the trick. I know that's a sin, Yeah. but sometimes that's a good burger cheese. Okay. Chocolate fondue with? Well, don't put cheese or chocolate fondue. Good, okay, it's just checking, making sure also, we're all human here. <laughs> I'm not the cheese man. That's my brother, so I don't know why you're quizzing me. No, you are representing, <laughs> you are representing cheese at this moment. You're no, an official cheese person. Do you know what's really good? Like what? a baked brie or a baked Ooh. camembert. Oh my God, a baked a brie? Baked brie. Something about that just sounds so, so sexy. My friend for a, once for a party took brie. crescent rolls and put a brie in the middle of it and then put some jelly on it. And everyone fought to the and death. And then <laughs> folded up the crescent rolls <sighs> and baked it. <sighs> and it was this cheesy, bready mm. croissant dip. It was so good. A fresh croissant yeah. is one of the greatest things you could I had a great eat. croissant this morning. The flaky, the flakiness of pulling it apart. It was so good. You and know, now I'm gonna eat just vegetable smoothies for the rest of the week because I just really indulged this weekend. Okay, but before you go on that, let's keep raving over fresh bread. Oh, it bread. was so good. It was like fresh and fresh bed, bed? Bed? Fresh bed, fresh, fresh bread with mm -hmm. butter oh, is just fantastic. Oh my gosh. It's so good. Fresh bread in any capacity. I think maybe my favorite bread is focaccia bread. Have you ever made it? No, I can't make anything. Do you I not can't cook? cook for the life of me. Nope, awful, awful chef. Have you tried? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did, did not go well. But fresh focaccia bread. I love making focaccia. With like pesto. Yeah. And you know, like f just grilled, slightly crispy, chicken in slices. Are you obsessed with chicken? Every favorite meal you've mentioned so far has I love chicken. an element of chicken in it. Yeah. You're like 
penne pasta with cheese and chicken. I love chicken. Fresh bread with pesto and chicken. Like yeah. everything has chicken in it. Yeah. I mean, I do love chicken. I don't like chicken that much. I don't really like pork that much. Oh, I like pork. Chicken's kind of boring to me. Really? Yeah. I can't do like the al pastor stuff. And I don't like chicken. I like pork. I like beef. I'm not a chicken person. I like chicken. I'll eat chicken. Steak. But it's kind of boring. Well cooked steak is. I think chicken aches me out. Like cooking raw chicken gives me the ick. Really? Yeah. Why? Where cooking raw beef doesn't. What? I don't know. There's something about it being white and slimy. It just gives me a massive ick. Mm, yeah, you don't want that. No. That's like Purdue chicken. It's like kind of gross. Well, no, even regular chicken too, when it's raw, is. Is it slimy though? It's kind of slimy and gross. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Marvin goes so slimy. It is real slimy when it's raw. Mm. And it has a smell. I just, I'm not good with raw chicken. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I'll eat all the chicken you we need. Have you ever touched the raw chicken? I have, yeah, of course. Yeah, but I don't remember it being slimy. When was yeah. the last time you touched a raw chicken? Oh my God, this is an embarrassing answer. Oh God. Months. That, really? Yeah, months. I told you I don't cook. It's bad. I don't have time. How do you eat? When people say they don't cook, I'm always curious about what they do when they're hungry. I literally eat food from Gourmet Garage twice or three times a day. <laughs> Cheers. <Yeah. laughs> That's what this is Cheers. from. <laughs> Gourmet Garage saves my life. If you ever needed to run into me, I guess that's the place to, to if catch If I can't me. find you, go to Gourmet yeah. Garage. If you needed to serve me legal papers, meet me at Gourmet Garage. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the perfect place. That's so you know, good. If I were to be assassinated, that would be, it that would be, be me the walking out of Gourmet out. Garage. <laughs> no, it'd be me walking out of Gourmet Garage, excited to eat my food. I'm like all happy. And then someone's like, you're dead. Do you know what? Sometimes <laughs> it's really endearing when you see a grown person really excited about something. I once saw a man in a business suit, very Wall Street, and he was eating a, a whippy ice cream cone. And he was like all And bad. he was so excited. And my heart just like, oh, it was this cutest thing. He had, a, he had a whippy ice cream cone and then a flake in it. And he just was so happy in his little suit, having his whippy ice cream. And for some reason it was so sweet to me. <laughs> like it was so endearing. It made me a bit emotional actually thinking about it. That's amazing. Do you know what I mean though? When someone has something like that, they're just so excited for. Yeah, well the kind of the inner child comes out. Yes, and I think if at that moment something had happened and the ice cream would have fallen on the ground, yeah. I would have cried. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I found a secret hangover cure, which is a McFlurry. Really? Yeah. Every, I'm I lactose intolerant. That would be a terrible hangover cure for me. <laughs> I'd be so I don't know sick. what it is. It's like the freezing of the insides, I guess, that just eating ice cream maybe in general. Mm. But I had a McFlurry once after being extremely hungover. Completely took care of it. Wow. And I get hungover really easily. Yeah. Do you ever no. wake up and, and you think you don't have a hangover and then you realize it's because you're still drunk and an hour after waking up, it hits you? That's, That's actually normally how I get hangovers. I worst. wake up and I'm okay. You're like, I feel great. This is yeah. this is amazing. Like and I'm then an stuffy. hour later you go, oh God. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I get, I get stuffy. And then three hours later, I'm usually having to take care of business. Yeah. You know? I have a friend that doesn't get hungover. Yeah. Let's see how long that lasts. How, how old is she? 28. Do I know her? No, I don't think so. Okay. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Any news that we need to cover today? Oh, Jesse Smollier. J Jesse Smollier. He got convicted. So Five out of six accounts. You know what? I'm not s Jesse Smollier. So Jesse's just Jesse. Jesse. You know Jesse Smollier. He, he was, was the Empire actor. He was the Empire actor who. Are you pronouncing it right? Am I? Jesse. Jesse. Smollett. 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 It's, it's not Smollier. Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett. I, mean, I think you're pronouncing it the way Dave Chappelle did it. He called him Juicy Smollett. <laughs> yes, he called him Juicy Smollett. Oh my God, Ju that got Jesse my Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett. Smollett. I'm Whatever not, his name is, he got convicted. You know about this case, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he just didn't know who the hell Jesse Smollett was. <laughs> so he's a famous <laughs> Empire actor, right? Who faked? Who faked like a, a, a racial hate crime. and a homophobic hate crime? Yeah. Can you sink any lower? What the hell? Now, he's still claiming he's innocent. By the way, he's still saying he's just he in was denial. Bad. It but, sounds um, like a serial problem. It was a uh, yeah. He was convicted as guilty of five out of six accounts. What was the sixth account? They didn't convict him on. So the sixth account was apparently that he lied after something. So technically, justice was well served, right? Wow. They didn't try to smack him with everything. Um, so I what forget does what he the have prosecutor to do now? said. What's the what's the? I don't know what his sentence is. I don't know if he's received his sentence necessarily. Um, but all I know is that he's convicted and also this is kind of uh i think a really good thing you know i really think that 
this is uh it was such a weird story i mean as the story came out things definitely weren't adding up it just got weirder and weirder like the, just even the, the fact stuff that he, he thought did. he could get away with it. exactly because it was so stupid like he went to get, he went to subway i think he said at two in the morning when it was freezing cold to get some tuna salad i think that's what he said yeah and then on the way out to get a subway sandwich to get a subway sandwich and on the way out he claimed he was attacked by people wearing maga hats yeah and he left the noose on the whole time yes to show up at the police station and cops were like yo what the cops was, didn't believe him for a second right the police commissioner is african-american and he's like absolutely I think he's the maybe the the head of the police, maybe not the commissioner. It was just a weird case, but you you know you have to obviously like listen and 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 try and pay attention to it when it first gets reported because you don't want the worst thing you could do is if someone's been attacked for, for any reason and then you ignore them because you think it's made up. But as more facts right. came out, innocent it got until weird, proven guilty. It got weirder, weirder, I was actually kind of hoping it wouldn't be true, you know, because I, I like Empire. I actually watch Empire. Right, yeah, it's a great I guess show, and he's awesome. It's it. one of those weird things where you, you it's disappointing. You hope it's 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 weird because you you hope it's not true because the idea that someone would be, would be attacked for something like that is horrific. So you hope it's not true, but then that also means he's lying. So you and you you don't hope he's lying. I don't know what's so more no, horrific. There's no real yes, exactly the actual attack or the fact he lied about the attack. I completely agree. Absolutely, crazy. it's hard to know which one. To, I don't think there's a winning in any situation. Both of them are sad outcomes, but. Juicy Smollier. He's out for the count, you know, and who else, who else Ruined got in trouble? Qu Cuomo's done. Yeah. Cuomo's been, he's over. Do you remember in the, the his beginning? His brother, of the, I mean, it, well, kicked off out, of CNN. Yeah. Do you remember in the beginning of the pandemic when he was coming out and addressing people a lot in New York and people were really looking up to him? Everybody and loved Cuomo. And they were Cuomo. like, we're a Cuomo sexual. And it was like hashtagging on, on. Yeah. Line. Like hashtag daddy. Yeah. Hashtag daddy Cuomo. And now everyone's deleting those tweets real quick because they're really embarrassed. I got to say like watching Cuomo in the early phase, I, I didn't start to see anything wrong. Mm -hmm. But then when I started hearing what he was doing with elderly people, I was like, hmm, what's you know going what? on here? Alexander, it's not his fault. He's just Italian. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, and his brother now, his brother, man. You know what? I'm kind of glad CNN is doing something about it. Yeah, well, they'd have to. That was too much of a, of a big hoo-ha. A lot of people are saying this is a slow progression towards CNN making some changes to be a little bit more reputable. Mm. You know, and that they're kind of getting the corruptive, the corrupted rot out from the public facing side of CNN, which I hope happens. Um, but you know, it's, it's an interesting change. And now they're saying Don Lemon's next because of Jesse. Oh, geez. We have they're a saying he did the same exact thing. Really? Yeah. They're saying that he was contacting him and using his sources to give him updates on the case and like where uh, the case is going to fall. Of, um, it's been a lot of convictions this week. Who else is getting convicted? Well, we had the Duggars. We had Juicy Smollier. We mm -hmm. had someone else, didn't we? Well, I guess Chris Cuomo was last Chris week, Cuomo, right? Chris Cuomo, yeah. Well, he wasn't convicted, but he was ousted. Oh, he was fired. Yeah. Fired. He was fired. Oh, no, he was let go, I think. And now he's suing. Did you know He that? is? He's suing CNN. Because apparently he's really good friends with the CEO of CNN. I'm sure he is. And he says that he was in the know the whole time. And so wow. now he's suing back CNN. So... It's gonna be interesting. You know, it's gonna be an interesting set of cases. I'm seeing if there's anything else on uh You guys sent me something about some camels. Oh, the camel beauty pageant. Yeah, what, this was what amazing. Was this? I didn't so, read it because I wanted so you to. So Marvin explain. sent it to me and like about ten minutes before you sent it, my mom sent it. So basically there's a camel contest in Saudi Arabia where they I guess it's a beauty contest, in fact, camels. And the prize is an insane amount of money. How much are we is this like Hidalgo level prize? Oh, millions and <laughs> millions and million? like sixty six million what? or something. And so the camels were getting Botox, Jesus. right? And the cosmetic procedures to look more beautiful. And they discovered it. And so like 40 camels have been disqualified for having <laughs> cosmetic procedures. <laughs> what would they get? Because they're not a natural camel beauty. So was it like bigger humps? What? Yes. What does, what, right? make, what makes a camel beautiful? Uh, like full lips. You read humps? the article. I don't know. You know, bigger, bigger lips. I don't know. That's what makes humans people like, like in Aladdin. Do you remember that scene in Aladdin when it's becoming a camel? Like Abu is becoming a camel, right? And the first thing that happens is like huge lips and then big hump. Maybe that's it. Maybe a big <laughs> hump. That's pathetic. I don't know, but they were getting Botox and cosmetic procedures to be more beautiful. You know what's weird is that cosmetic procedures work. Well, what's weird is that having a camel beauty contest in the first place. Is it just a beauty contest or is it to pass like mating rights? Because this is what I know about Arabia is that they have a long history and tradition of breeding horses internationally. 
Oh, they have beautiful horses. So yeah. everyone would go to, you know, the movie Hidalgo kind of touches upon it where the breeding rights of their sacred horses would be passed on. It was like the most sacred treasure. Can you imagine though, if you, if you just happened to have a camel that was so beautiful, you won 66 million. <laughs> I have it's to know so what makes a beautiful camel. Like that's more than the Miss Universe wins. Yeah. Is yeah. that really more yes. than Miss Universe wins? That's yes. so funny. <laughs> so much money. Oh my God. That's, how much does the Miss Universe, well not Miss Universe, right? Who yeah, is it? Miss um, Universe. Is that it? There Isn't is Miss, Miss Universe strength? No, no, no. Miss Universe is a beauty pageant. Okay. Beauty pageant. How much do you think she makes? I'm going to say her prize money is 15 million. No, I don't think it's that much. You don't? No, I think it's like, it's a lot of sponsorships and a lot of- um, It's a contract. Yeah, but I it's don't a, think it's that a much. Enslavement contract. How much? Two hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So not worth but it. But it's the, it's not for the money. They all say it's for the reputation. Yeah. Okay. And the opportunity. Right. For the. They should reputation. just become a camel because they win more money. Let's be real. Because how many Miss Universe winners are you know winning Nobel prizes? Well, how many camels are winning Nobel Peace Prize? Probably more than Miss Universe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh man, to be that lucky camel that won. Yeah, I'm curious, like, what the shining example is. Like, is there one that has won more? Is there a specific camel That's that saying, has won what more a, rewards? What makes a beautiful awards? camel? Also, why would they give Botox to a camel? It's got to be the lips. You're right. It's got to be the lips and or, the hump. It's the only thing the that makes wrinkles, sense. Or the wrinkles, a wrinkly forehead. Oh, and kind of like to make it less desert abused. You know, like better skin. Right, more thing. youthful. More youthful. That's what all camels want is to have that youthful glow. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. It's so Humanity weird. is so strange. I love it, but it's so weird. It made me so happy. It just made me laugh that Marvin sent it to me and then my mom as well. That you guys had the same thought. And in crazy news, did you hear that we successfully um, developed a reproductive robot? Yes, a robot that, that can reproduce on its own. Did you hear about this, That's Marvin? That's a horror movie waiting to happen right We there. just, we, we call him Xenobot, Xenobot, like instead of a Xenomorph, it's a Xenobot, and they can reproduce. Mm -hmm. What so weird. are we doing? Yikes, we're gonna have robots. Would you fuck a robot if it had feelings, like in her? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I if, if there was a robot that you could kind of, I don't mean like a sex toy, but I meant well, like- Well, I mean, that's what it is. But if you had a robot that, that could think and feel, like say- Can it we provide like context? Human. It looked yeah. like a human, right? But it was okay. actually a robot. But yeah. it functioned as a human in the same way. You could walk down the street, no one would know. Would you, would you fuck a robot? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like my answer is no, but- anything's possible, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, honestly, you know, like, I don't know. I like, don't, I don't if know. you couldn't tell maybe. I don't know. I it's mean, does it have like special powers? Yes. To, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> does it have glitch. special powers in its fingers where it could just touch my brain and make me orgasm stronger than anything in this known universe? No, it's just like a normal- You would do it and you would do it, Marvin. If it's it just had a that normal ability. human. Well, it's a normal human, but it's not, it's a robot. But it's not a human. No, it's a robot, but it looks and thinks and feels like a human. What's the vagine like? A human. Mm. But you have this to charge weird. it. Do you have to charge it? <laughs> Just the vagina you have yeah. to charge? <laughs> oh Everything. God. You plug in with a USB drive at the end of the day. I don't know. I think it would charges. be too weird. I think it would be too weird. Yeah. I don't think so. You know, I Would think, I fuck a robot? Would Probably. you? Probably. I don't know. Actually, that I mean, would be weird. Most women kind of do already. I like, but I'm in like a human boyfriend robot. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I like mean a, listen. I don't think I don't think women would want the feelings with the robot. I think they just prefer the robot. It's true, it's a lot to deal with. <laughs> They'd be like, why deal with the robot feelings when you could just have the vibration? I don't know if I'd feel like <laughs> if I could I don't know if I could build an emotional connection to a robot. I don't think so either. Right? I think I'd be freaked out. I'd probably be like, I should kill like this thing. Like that eyes as soon as would be a little too glossy. And also it'd be like trying to make friends with a snake. You know what I'm saying? Like No. I don't know what you're saying. I can't make friends with this snake. It's a, it's a snake. Like it doesn't feel things, you know, it's just looking at you like, have you seen her computing ways to murder her? I've seen, uh, that's the Mike Jones flick, right? Yeah, yeah. I have not seen that, but I have seen AI. No, 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 not the yeah. Spielberg AI. Have you seen iRobot? I have seen iRobot. Which is the one with the- uh, Will Smith? Bicentennial Man. Oh. That made me cry. See, that's a robot. Awful that movie. Feelings. Awful movie. This is Robin Williams' worst mistake. It has feelings. This is his worst movie. I remember that movie making me cry when I was younger. What's the one that um, uh, Alicia Vikander did, right? With um, 
uh, what's his name who played Poe in Star exactly Wars? Talking about Ex Machina. Machina. That was spooky, right? The way she felt was, I think, the most human version in cinema. Oh wow! You know, because her isn't really even a robot, right? Her is more like a it's projection. A it's a voice. It's kind of like Blade Runner version well, it's just of robot. A voice. You never see a body, right? But in Blade Runner, right, it's a projection yeah. with a voice, so it's kind of similar. It's like having sex with Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done that? I Can tried. you do that? Is it's that a thing? really awkward moment in pandemic. No, I don't. I, don't feel like <laughs> I was really lonely. I feel like Alexa wouldn't be good at dirty talk because she kind of has a robotic voice. She'd be voice. like, ow, 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 <laughs> ow. <laughs> 10 packages are inbound. What? No, no, no. Too late. Too late. Yeah. Too late. I have your card. Kitchen lights <laughs> off. Yeah, right, exactly. right. Like I am coming. Your whole house is like <laughs> lighting up. <laughs> your TV is like turning on. You know, it's like Oprah and you and you and you. You know what I'm saying? Your lights the are kitchen flickering. Counter lights are going on right. Your dishwasher's shooting out Marvin, suds. Marvin Gaye starts playing. Let's <laughs> get it out. Yeah. Oh my God. It'd be, that'd be amazing. If she could do that. I mean, it'd be, you know. <laughs> Maybe we'll give it a try. <laughs> no, I mean, it's too weird, but it's going to come to a point where that happens, right? Because now they have things like alien dildos. You've heard of this? No, this is a real thing. This is a real fetish. I shit you not. Oh, wait, wait. Is this the, the dildos that look like they should? Like alien parts. Like a, yes, and yes, they, I have they seen those. they drop eggs. Yes, I've seen like those. goo. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Hey, hey. We don't yuck no, someone's shame. yum. No, shame. Shame on you. <laughs> shame on you. I don't care. We don't yuck someone's yum. <laughs> that sounded so wrong i think that's why they buy it is to <laughs> yuck some yum they're like can i get extra yum with this yuck in particular <laughs> i'm ordering it ahead of time supply chains are short we got to think ahead baby we got to make sure we get those I eggs get, i think if it doesn't hurt anyone just let people enjoy what they enjoy what is wrong with you I mean, why like, do you enjoy look, getting eggs put into your body it's not fucking it's weirdo not for me if someone was like, do you want to join in? I'd be like, no, nah, I'm good. I'll pass. But if someone's really into that. Then- like I can wrap my head around more of like furry because it's a human being and it's like a weird way that human interaction is happening. But when you have like an alien penis dropping eggs in your body, what the heck are we talking about? How is that? Time's almost up. He says, I understand time's almost. We, but the, there are the world is ending. happening. The world is ending with this shit. This is what we spend our energy on. Do you know someone had to invent this? Someone had to design it. Someone yeah. had to design it. And 3D print it. How many, oh my, how many hours do you think? Oh, what kind of oh, material should we be using, Mario? Oh, What's yeah. the texture going to feel like? Let's test this texture and we'll test this texture. Someone's really passionate about alien what? egg sex toys. I don't understand it. I don't either, but someone clearly does because they're selling apparently. They're selling and uh, um, can you imagine if an alien came down and saw us doing that, what it would think would be like, yo. Do you think aliens are doing that with the human version? Yes, without a doubt. They're, <laughs> they're like, like, look at this weird human, human penis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like how strange is it? Look, it squirts mayonnaise. And there's some alien version of you that's like, so fucking weird. Why <laughs> yeah. would they do that? That's so right. gross. Shame. Why don't they just pass intellectual sexuality? You know, like, I don't know how they would do it. They'd just be like, Ooh. That's what they do in, um, <laughs> And one bicentennial. Avatar. Oh, an avatar. They join their tails together. No, avatar is mad sexual, and they, right? They like avatar is mad sexual, right? You have this sex. tail that has like fibers at the end of it, and then they connect it, and it's just like orgasm. Yeah. And on that note, we've been broken spoken. <laughs> <sighs> Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Broken Spoken, episode seven. I hope you learned something. Yeah, I learned a lot. <laughs> I don't know if I learned anything. I learned about alien sex toys, so you know. Yeah, so it is um, what it is. if uh, you wanted to donate alien sex toys, Meryl, why don't you give them your address? No, I'm good, actually. Thank okay. you. All right. uh, well, I appreciate we'll figure the that offer. out for next week. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.